Today I'm going to be walking through how to make the rhombic dodecahedron infinity mirrored lamp um, that Adam Savage made on his tested channel. I'm just going to let me practice pointing things out while I kind of get this intro out of the way. And I watched it and it was super cool and I was thinking can I make that and can I make it slightly better? And so my improvement is that I'm using a mirrored acrylic sheet. It's about one millimeter thick. So I don't have to deal with that squeegee that he was doing. Anyway, so once my finger resets back to the beginning, thumbs up, thanks. So what you need to do is you'll need to pick up some LED strip lighting, about eight millimeter thick. I got uh, warm lighting just because the mirrored acrylic is kind of blue. You'll need a, uh, electric tape. You'll need 22 gauge speaker or LED wire. You'll need safety glasses because safety is important. Sharpies, an X-Acto knife, um, you'll need printouts of your rhombus, you'll need a Dremel, uh, I've got the battery powered one, don't recommend it, get wired if you have the choice, uh, a ruler for straight edge, and 12 inch by 24 inch mirrored acrylic and 12 by 12 inch mirrored acrylic. And yeah, let's get started. All right, that's enough thumbs up. All right, one more. Gone. Being a dodecahedron, you're gonna, wow, that first rhombus was so much better. You're gonna need 12 sides, and the dimensions that you're gonna care about are your width and height, or X and Y, uh, from a program perspective. So I used Affinity Designer and uh, the diamond tool, and you provide X and Y values, and then that creates the rhombus. And as long as you are calculating using these formulas with uh, theta equal to arc cosine of one third, or 70.53 degrees, you'll get uh, rhombi that are rhombuses that are the correct dimensions. And always use radiance if you want, because do what makes you happy in life and things will be good. Once you figure out your dimensions and tolerances, then the next step is to make a paper mock-up. So let me just whip that up real quick here and let's, uh, let's probably take me a minute. Um, perfect. Looks like I did my math right. Check for bad ability, that is very important. Uh, and also hand feel and tossability, also important factors when checking your mock-up. <laughs> you ready? Awesome. Let's get this rolling. I'm gonna start off with tracing some, some of a rhombuses, rhombi, and do some test cuts. And sick. I would not use this video as a tutorial on safety guidelines, but some of the precautions I took were safety glasses and a breath mask to protect from acrylic dust. Earplugs are also a great idea. Another thing to note, the challenge that I ran into with the Dremel was that the battery powered is, uh, it's battery powered, so it's kind of limited in how long you can use it to cut. So I would recommend getting a wired Dremel if you have that. My roommates had a battery powered one, so that's why I used that one. Something else that I would recommend too concerning the Dremel is I used a grinding bit on it, one of the ones that came with the battery powered Dremel to begin with and one thing that I saw that was recommended was using a bit called a 561 bit and supposedly that's really good at cutting things like tile so I think that would make short work of acrylic and might reduce the amount of like melted plastic that you get around the ridges. It wasn't really an issue with when I was assembling the rhombic dodecahedron itself but it might make your life a little bit easier. I don't know if you try it let me know in the comments below. Hopefully it works well for you. The next step is crucial, go outside, because it's nice to be outside. And also, less acrylic dust in your face, which is good. A realization I had while making this, this project was as I was cutting out, you can kind of see bits of plastic flying everywhere. and. <laughs> That's something that you hear a lot about being bad is like microplastics in the environment and this is a, a great way to generate those. So I think a better way to cut this is either try that 561 bit, which I, I don't know, but might kick off less waste plastic or 
to have these laser cut. I looked into laser cutting before I started this, and it was it was a bit expensive. It was about $150 for like one hour of work, and that was like their minimum charge rate at a local laser cuttery. I don't know if that's what it's called, laser cuttery. It sounds awesome, so let's let's call it a laser cuttery. And so I was like, no thanks, not gonna do that. But I, I don't know, there's a, there's a certain ethical responsibility here. And yeah, that's just food for thought. Time to start assembly. You're going to be peeling off the protective coating on the acrylic sheet that you bought. And notice that there's two different sides, one side is going to have the mirrored finish and the other side will just be the non mirrored finish and you can tell it by if you look at the edge at an angle the side that doesn't have the mirrored finish you can see light intrusion through the cut and that's the side that you're going to want to have on the outside of the rhombic dodecahedron so that's the side you're going to be applying tape to because the mirrored finish can be removed by tape so if you accidentally taping correctly or you need to take it apart for some reason if you apply it to the mirrored side then you'll ruin the mirrored finish uh, something that I'm doing here so you'll you'll make two versions of this particular shape right here that'll be like the top and the bottom um, and then you'll connect the two parts using the rhombus on the side that kind of go around in a circle around it um, so basically you'll have two of these shapes top and bottom and then you'll connect them connect the two with four of the rhombuses, rhombi, whatever. One thing that I, I, I don't recommend doing is actually pre-assembling it like this if you want to light every single vertice. Uh, and by vertice, I mean every single point at which a rhombus connects to another rhombus because it's much easier to attach the LED strip when the shape is just laid out flat and you can have all the wires everywhere and then start assembling the dodecahedron after all the wiring's already in place. Next, I cut up all the LED strip lighting into 10 centimeter lengths. Well, not all, but 24 pieces of it. On the particular LED strip lighting that I was using, every fifth or so segment had double metal beads on it and you couldn't cut it. So I just made sure those were evenly interspersed as they were on the reel. I don't know if they have electrical significance or not. This is my first project really soldering a lot and I got intimidated as soon as I started. And I just decided at this point to save my sanity, instead of doing all 24 vertices, I was only gonna do 12. Uh, and then see how that turned out. So at this point, my plan is just to light one half of the entire rhombic dodecahedron and hope for the best. I think it turned out pretty good. Um, but that's, that's kind of spoilers, so. In a revelation surprising nobody, it was way more comfortable soldering at a workstation than it was on the floor. This is the compromise for doing only 12 vertices as opposed to all 24. And this is the original plan in which every single, all 24 vertices were lit up. It's a good idea to check the wiring throughout the project just to make sure that all the LEDs are lighting up and that your soldering is good. And also, disconnect the main circuit before you solder anything so you don't electrocute yourself. It works! Fist pump. Now to bend the thick wire into place and attach the LED slip strip lighting to the interior of the rhombic dodecahedron. I went a little rogue on the wiring diagram, but the end result worked just fine.
This kind of reminds me of, for some reason, the Demogorgon from Stranger Things. I don't know if anyone else gets that vibe. And as we wrap this up, it's time for the moment of truth. My heart is pounding. Oh, that looks pretty cool. Oh, cool, it even works with the lights on. And now for some finishing touches, just reinforcing all of the tape connections on the dodecahedron. And I think it turned out pretty awesome. Like, that's, that's really cool. Like, look how far you can see into that. That's awesome. Um, and honestly, the amount of lighting feels about right, uh, having only half of it lit. Because the, the white LED strip takes up so much space on those uh, on the sides of it. Now we're doing some shy camera work because, you know, classy shy camera. And yeah, so I'm, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Some things you could do to improve this particular version of Adam Savage's rhombic dodecahedron is maybe using like a hot glue gun or clear tape on the vertices because I think that might yield an even cooler effect than the, the black blocked out version that I've got here, which is similar to what he did too. And also to use like actual mirrored glass, like that's the only way that I can think of like really even upping it beyond this. Because as you can see, the acrylic mirror is warped a little bit. So a couple of the, a couple of the windows, you get like really good clarity on the reflection, but on other ones, you can kind of see warping around the edge. I hope you enjoyed the video or at least found it somewhat useful. Check back in a couple months, I might post some more stuff. So with that, have an awesome day. As you can probably tell, I really, really enjoy working with cutting edge technology.